Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Splattercat, and welcome back this evening for another episode of Noir Syndrome, in which we attempt to find a killer on the cold, misty streets. Today, I was going to ramp the difficulty up to hard, but it appears as though we just haven't leveled up at this point. We don't have enough bullets. Hard mode makes it so that one faction is randomly hostile to you, so it's civilians, police, or the mob, and unfortunately, you start with one bullet, and you start with no money, and you basically starve to death a lot faster, too, so I think we need to level up on normal mode before we can go into hard with any serious kind of acumen. So anyways, let's go ahead and step on out, take a deep breath, and let's find ourselves a killer. Starting out in our apartment, as always, we will give Jasper the good luck pet. All right, nothing found on our bookcase, nothing found on our bed, still hard as a rock. Can't really remedy that, seeing as we have no cash. But we find $14 amidst a mess of unsolved cases on our desk. Stepping on out of the house, we find that Mary Scott has been murdered, and it took place in the sewers. Let's go ahead and take a look at the crime scene. I don't think we're going to find much here, but we can take a look. There's a rat who's not looking to harm anyone. That's good, because I've got bullets, and I'll put you down, rat. I'll put you down. Raw sewage flowing on in, throwing the effervescent stink of refuse into the air. Nothing to be found there either. However, we could... Ah, we find $15 in the door, which is kind of strange, but I'll take it. We find a silver ring in the electrical box. It's not much to go on, but we've got enough cash right now to where we can advance through the game and maybe find some of the things we need to make this investigation go according to plan. We step on out, and with 12 days left, we find that no crimes have been committed. I'm going to step into the slums, and let's see if we can find ourselves some suspects. Richard Thompson says that Irene Baker is a shady character. Nothing to be found in the bathroom. It's mostly intact, which leads me to believe the bathroom might be especially polite. I think I made the joke already, but I'm going to make it again, damn it, because they made a typo. Edward Young is added to our list of suspects by Martha Jones. Nothing to be found on the bed, and so we continue our investigation upstairs. Check the pisser, see if anything's in there. It's dark, but it's functional. Wish there's a joke in there somewhere, but we don't have a lockpit to unlock the second half of the slum, so we'll be on our way, seeing as we don't have the proper equipment to get the job done fully. Richard Smith is murdered. The murder takes place in the sewers, so lots of people getting done in at the sewers. Probably put a police patrol in there somewhere. Let's go ahead and check the church for any clues. Nothing to be found right there. Nothing to be found in any of the pews. But Harold Moore says that Mary Smith has a history of trouble. We also find $9 in the altar. We are stealing from the poor box right now. But you know what? It's going to a good cause because we're trying to find ourselves a killer. How much money do we have right now? Let's have a look. We have $38 in cash, 3 bullets, and 0 lockpicks. Okay. Well, not enough clues to go on right now. So I think what I'll do next is we will go to the market. And there's usually a reasonable bit of chatter to be found here. Richard Thompson says that we're the last hope for the city. We are the hope that this city deserves. Fresh apples for $2, not going to help us out much because apples don't restore like any of your hunger. We find ornate fabric, which is going to be indicative of the job that the perpetrator takes part in. Buy ourselves a couple of mangoes, and we feel full. We find shoe padding, which means that he's probably going to be a dancer. We ask the local mobster if she can help. Edward Lewis is added to the list. It says to keep our eyes on. On accordance with Irene Brown. And Virginia Smith says that Richard Smith is the guy that we're looking for. Whether or not that can be trusted, I don't know. They're definitely mobsters, so they might be lying to cover up for somebody else. We find a business card. And that's it. So it looks like the market was a great place to be tonight. We're feeling normal. Not full anymore, but I'd rather feel normal than feeling a little weird. So I feel as though that's probably the best way to feel right now. So all of our feelings in order. We check our list for clues. We've got ourselves a silver ring, which indicates that they're a civilian or a mobster. We've got a business card, which corroborates that evidence. We've got ornate fabric, which says that they're a tailor or a dancer. We've got shoe padding that says that they're a dancer or a driver. If we're going to cross-reference that, I think it's a reasonable assumption to be made that we're looking for a dancer. We have one dancer on our list right now. It's Marie Smith, who's a civilian. So we'll keep our eyes out for a civilian ID. Richard Smith's been murdered, so he's off the list. I guess that's one way to get yourself taken off the list of possible suspects. Not the one that I would choose, but it's one nonetheless. Let's go to City Hall and see what's bumping over here. We find a lockpick. Nothing on the desk over here. We have a chat with a police officer. 
who seems to think that we are the best hope for this city in finding the killer. Rose Brown is added to our list of suspects by Harold Moore, who seems to think that he knows clearly who did the crime. We find a lucky charm. Having found me lucky charms, I think it's time that we have a balanced breakfast, but we're going to leave that behind for now. We're going to talk to Martha Jones, who says she's busy at the moment. Too busy for a badge. Seems to be a common argument here in the city. Female fingerprints found. It's going to help narrow down the search a little bit. Irene Baker says that Edward Young is the guy, and we find casual attire that seems to indicate that our suspect is a mobster or a civilian. Our investigation's coming to a head right now. It seems like we've got a lot of information available. Let's go ahead and take stock and see what remains in the city. So for right now, we have almost all the clues. We have female fingerprints. A lot of indications that it could be a civilian or a mobster. And one indication, cross-reference, that says that it's a dancer. We've got almost all the suspects as well. At least over half of them locked down. Odds are right now that our lady is Marie Smith. So we could go for it right now, but we've got a lot of time on our hands, so I'd like to get the case a little bit tighter before we go any further. Does that sound alright with all of you? Okay, let's keep on moving. I think, with all the places that we've checked so far, we have yet to check the police station. So let's head on over there and see what we can find. We find a lockpick. None of these guys seem to have any indication as to who the perpetrator might be. He's selling a bullet for five bucks, not gonna need it, I don't think. Doris Smith is added to our list of suspects by Robert Clark. He says he has no doubt in his mind. Hopefully we'll find clues to actually help that assumption out, because as we go right now, it's just as we have right now, it's just a gut hunch, that's all we've got. And when I'm trying to make decisions, I try not to go with my gut, because it tends to be kind of hungry most of the time, and I find that that throws off the readings. We find a thick rope. Which I think the thick rope is... I don't know if that indicates a job, or if it indicates a civilian versus mobster. Let's have a look. The thick rope means it's a civilian or a mobster, so we don't have a whole lot... God, we have way too many clues pointing at the same thing right now. We have a dancer that's mob-affiliated that's female. So Dora Smith and Rose Brown... Rose Brown's a driver, and Dora Smith is a chef. So it may actually be a driver. I don't know. I think Marie Smith is still our lady. We're going to go to a few more locations, though, and see what we can find out before we go any further. I don't want to make any false accusations just yet. Let's go to the mechanic shop. Actually, do we have any... What lockpicks do we have right now? We have two lockpicks. Let's go to the tower. See if we can't lock down a few more pieces of evidence. Anna Harris is added to our suspects by Marie Smith, who says to keep her eyes on Anna Harris if she was us. But she's not us. And so we're going to keep a level head, and we're going to try and do this in accordance with the law. We find $9 in a stack of barrels. Harold Moore wants to know what the city's come to. Nothing more than it ever was, Harold. Nothing more than it ever was. $15 found in a painting. How useful that'll be, I don't know. I've never gone to this top floor before, so let's go and see what this guy's selling. He's selling bullets for $3, which is a great deal. I agree, that is a great deal. I don't think I need that many bullets, though. Why keep these all the way up here? I don't know, maybe to keep them boxed in. It seems like a crate hiding space. Let's head back down to the bottom floor. And it looks like we didn't find much here. We found a little bit of cash, but nothing that's going to help us along the way with our investigation. But it's another place that we can cross off the list, so there's no need to be feeling down about the investigation. I think we're making pretty good progress. We've been just about everywhere so far, so I think it's time to mix it up. Let's go to the city motel. It's the last big location. Checking the desk, we don't find anything. Donald Allen says that the criminals are afraid. Mixed drink for $10. Barbara Thompson says that we're the last hope, so we lay off that drink. We find something at the table right there, but unfortunately because it said we were hungry on the same thing, we couldn't see what it was. It wasn't anything, is it money? I believe we picked up a little bit of cash. Because I'm not seeing anything right here that looks any different than what we had before. Step on upstairs and see if we can't learn anything new. 
Walking past the large pillars, we look at the excess of the city. This game's fun to roleplay to, I don't know why. Donald Johnson says he's not in the mood for a talk right now. Paul Robinson says something similar. suppose we could buy ourselves a little bit of dinner right now. We don't need a white wine. I don't need to be feeling buzzy when there's the possibility of people shooting at me. Go ahead and use one of our lockpicks to check this room right here. Oh, we don't have any left. We used them all up. Well, we're out of luck then. Nary a lock to be picked by our skills. So we'll head back downstairs and out into the night because we've just about hit the end of this case files number three. I think I've got the perpetrator fixed out. I think you guys probably agree with me at this point based on what we have. Still, I'd like to hit a few more locations. Donald Allen is now dead. Once again, mur murdered in the sewers. I didn't say moo murdered. Moo murdered would be a little bit indicative of bovine murder. Bovine brutality. Let's go to the merch or we'll go to the mechanic shop. Sometimes you find good stuff here. We find a lockpick. We talk to Chutney. We also talk to the mechanic, and also this female sidekick over here. Or maybe they're both sidekicks because they're both female or something, I don't know. We'll go ahead and... One of them is the leader. One of them is the female leader, one of them is the female sidekick. There, I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. Robert Clark says... Well, Robert Clark says nothing because he's been murdered. I suppose that leaves us with the department store. Let's go check there for anything we might find. We find a dollar. Not doing a whole lot of business here nowadays. Check the racks as well. Nobody here has anything to offer us, unfortunately. Use one of the lockpicks to get into the back room and check the racks. Two dollars. And another lockpick to replace the one that we just used. So I think our investigation's pretty much taken care of at this point. I think I know who I'm going to point the finger at. It's just kind of... We have time left, so we might as well use it just to make sure that we don't make an inaccurate accusation. With three days remaining, there's a couple places we can still go. Let's go to the warehouse, I think. Actually, the speakeasy. Stop in for a drink and see who's got loose lips that will potentially sink some of their friends' ships. A cannoli. Let's eat a cannoli so that we feel a little bit better. There we go. A lockpick on that table. Nothing on the other one. Raymond Thompson's got nothing to say. Selling a bullet for four bucks. At that price, how could you not want to kill somebody? Find nothing in any of these locations? Doris Smith says to stop accusing the wrong people. Otherwise, we'll get ourselves into trouble. We pet Buttons, who's happy to have a home. Most of the dogs around here nowadays are strays. We can steal from the safe, but that's going to put us at odds with the mob, and so I'm going to leave it alone for right now, given how our last case file went. We simply don't have the bullets to dispose of everybody. Although, if we bought them from this guy, we could. Buy a couple bullets just in case. Actually, yeah, let's get into a shootout with the mob right now. We could use the extra cash. I, I wish the cash carried over in between investigations if you were successful. That would be kind of a sweet thing to add to the game, but, you know, not for right now. We steal, and then take a shot at killing Dora Smith. She's now dead, although she might have been one of our perpetrators. That might have been a bad idea. Take a shot at anybody looking in our way. Bullets ring out in the night. We use a human shield to get by, before firing further bullets at anybody we can fire at. Oh, and we fired at the same time, and so case files, number three, comes to an end with us laying face down in the dirt, another stiff, decorating the city. Marie Smith was our culprit, but we didn't make it to that justification, we didn't make it to the ends of the investigation. Thank you, Nerdcastle, for joining me here for another episode of Noir Syndrome. This was case files number three, and my name is Splattercat, and I'm happy to have you here as we pick through the brains of the collective citizens of the city and try and find the clues necessary to put somebody away. If there's one thing we've learned so far, it's that picking the safe simply isn't safe. I'll see you in case files number four. Take care out there in the night, everybody, and stay safe.